Hello and welcome to part 2 of our motorcycle modding workshop. In part 1 I showed you how to mask areas that you want to work on by using a quick mask tool. Uh, as you've seen that was quite neat um, and quite, quite easy to use. In this part I will actually show you how to use those areas that we actually masked out to apply our custom paint job. I've done some work offline and apart from the tank I also have now the side cover and the rear and the front fenders selected out as well and I've also kept my uh, Volusia badge separately because I would like to have it on top of my custom paint later on. Uh, these layers tend to get messy after a while so I think it's a good idea to from 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 the very start to keep it nice and tidy. This button here allows you to create folders. So let's name that parts. And you can grab all the uh, original parts that we've, the layers that we've created, and you can drag it onto the parts folder. And later on, when we'll get much, much more layers, you can collapse and expand that. That's very handy. If you don't need to see it, well, why should it show? Right, so uh, I think we'll uh, we'll start with the tank because that's what we originally worked on in part one. And uh, with custom paint job and the way you modify, you probably will modify your bike. It, I think Google is your best friend. That's the uh, the main source of of samples and inspiration, whatever whatever you want to call it. I had my search and I came up with two images that I will use. which is uh, this nice tank and a fender. Uh, well, tank will go on the tank and this fender will actually be uh, adjusted slightly so it will go on the front and the rear. I will only show you the f how to do the front because uh, you can do the rear yourself. You, I don't need, really need to show any of that to you. It's all repetitive. So I've done some work on this uh, on this image uh, I used the quick mask tool again to select out our uh, our tank reference. Um, it is advisable, I think, to uh, when you do search for those images, make sure that you search for uh, resolutions that will be roughly similar to what your main image is. Otherwise, if you'll if you'll grab a, uh, an image that's way too small, and then you'll try to resize it so it covers all your tank you'll end up with with pixelated image which is not really nice. If it's too big, that's not a problem. You can always downsize it. You you're not really losing the detail there. Uh, but if you can just just keep it fairly similar and in, in, um, in in the resolution well. I do it basically by doing Google search on images by just choosing large in results. Um, how do you transfer that onto your image? It's very simple. All you have to do is just drag your layer that you've selected out left click, drag it onto your main one, release, there it is. It, it says, it appears as a any any standard layer. And it is actually almost the right size. I'll have to modify it slightly, I'll have to rotate it and resize it a little bit to to match my my tank on Volusia. Uh, when I work on layers to adjust the shapes. I normally lower down the opac opacity as well. That allows you to see the underneath uh, underneath the shape which is very handy and uh, I think let's get cracking with that. To modify I'll raise that for myself a bit higher. To modify your layer you can use the transform tool and you activate it by pressing Control T and you'll see the bounding box appear and what this allows you to do is resize well either resize and just stretch it or squish it or if you want to resize and keep the original shape without letting go of your left mouse button you just press shift and then it only allows you to resize while retaining the original shape I not sure if I want to resize it. What I'll do, I'll just try to match it up. The most important thing area for me is the the bottom 
and the front curve because that is very nicely it has a nice reflection in here I want to keep it fairly the same I don't want that I don't want to chop that off and uh, by the looks of it I need to rotate my new tank as well you rotate simply by going outside the bounding box when you go outside the bounding box your cursor changes to like two arrows and when you click and drag in any direction it starts rotating your layer uh, let's see something like that and I would like to align it with that with that area here so I'll just drag it close as put it down and I think I need to resize it just a little bit that should do it actually I will do a squishy squashy resizing because I don't need to retain the same shape uh, all I care about is that main curve here and I think that will uh, something like that will do there we go so as you can see after I've done that I'm left with some areas in here and transform tool allows you to modify the shape in a few different ways you can scale rotate if I right clicked in the, in the middle of the transform and it allows you to scale rotate skew distort to a perspective uh, distortion and warp. I will use warp. Warp is very cool. What it does, it basically breaks down your image into several areas and each of those areas they have like a, uh, uh, warp controls which is wherever you grab it starts warping your image. So that's very useful if you want to move stuff about just by dragging it, just by grabbing it by edges and just squishing it all or stretching it a little bit and that will work just fine for us to align it to the border that I'm after just grab it in a few places and stretch it and to be honest that should that should do it uh, to accept your transform you just press enter and there it is so now we need to cut it down to size and we do that simply by going to our old tank layer that's why I mentioned in the part one that we will only use it for for the actual selections you select the your layer by pressing control and clicking in the middle of the box here there we go that brings up our original selection and all we have to do now is go to our new tank invert the selection because we want everything outside the tank selected so we can delete it so we press Control, shift and i to invert and the last thing to do is to press delete there we go everything has been cut down to size and if we zoom out and put our opacity back to 100 percent look at that that's our brand new tank to add a bit of a reality to it, let's drag the badge on top of it. Hey, look at that. Now that looks like a custom paint job on a on a fuel tank for me to me. So that's uh we'll leave it at here. We'll leave it here in terms of uh doing uh doing our custom paint job. There is a lot more to do in terms of um terms of uh, color correction and shadows but I will leave that till part three at the moment we'll just focus on blocking up the shapes blocking out the shapes and uh, making sure that we have all our uh, selections nicely covered uh, let's call that new tank actually I'll create another group which will be called new parts and I'll drag my tank into that group so that's first part done. Right, so having done that, what I'll do, I'll do the same with the fender. So there's my blocked out image of the fender and I will repeat everything I've done with the tank. I'll just drag the layer into our, into our image. Uh, I'll call it straight away new front fender and uh, 
Well, I'll start working on it straight away. So what we'll have to do is do the transform a little bit more on this one. However, if you'll notice, if we'll rotate it like that a little bit, and you can also right click in the middle, and you can flip it, and if we flip it horizontally, that's starting to look like a shape that we could actually use. So what I need to do now is just resize it so it roughly matches our shape. And remember it doesn't have to be very accurate, it can be uh, it can be a little bit off, that's quite alright. And uh, let's just squash it maybe a bit like that. Cool. And I will right click and I will do some warping on it as well, just to stretch it past the point where it actually overlaps. And a little bit here. Just move that up. Stretch, stretch. you don't need to be careful not to stretch certain areas too much because what you'll end up with is a really ugly blurry areas what you want to do is to try to keep it as close to the um, as close to the original as possible and I think that should do it I can really put much work into it and try to make it as accurate as possible, though for this demonstration I think we can go with that, so I'll just press enter, and again I'll select, make a selection of the original front fender by pressing control and left clicking in this box, and we need to press control shift and I to invert the selection so we have everything outside selected, select our new front fender and press delete. And there it is. So that is starting to look quite nice. And the rear fender is no not much different. It's the same story. You you can grab the same shape from 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 this image from any Im image of a fender that you will have and just transform it and warp it to a rough shape that you're after and all you have to do now uh, then is just cut it down to size and that will be your base for further work on both uh, the uh, the colors and then the shadows and then the custom decals that we'll put on top of it because why stop here if we have a custom paint job we might as well put something on top of it to make it uh, even more custom why not uh, I and I think that's that's it for part two. Give it a go. See how how you uh, how you manage. See what what can what comes out as a result. And uh, I will do the the rear fender and the side cover offline. And in part three, we will start looking at making sure that it looks far more realistic than what we have now. So we don't have that cartoony, overblown, overexposed look. And uh, We'll see what else we can do to our motorcycles. Cheers guys.